Hey guys, and welcome to Until Dawn Season 2. That's Season 2 of my series on Until Dawn, not Season 2 of the game itself. Hopefully they don't make a game called that's literally called Until Dawn Season 2, or this will be very confusing. So, if you have not watched my Season 1 playthrough, which isn't called Season 1, it's just called Until Dawn, let's play Until Dawn. Uh, go to the description right now and click, the, click on the playlist to, that says Watch More Until Dawn and stuff like that. Go watch the playlist from the beginning. Don't watch this, because pretty much my next sentence is going to immediately be spoilers, so you should watch my first playthrough first so you can experience it all with me in real time and we can all discover the story together. Because this is a playthrough for people who have already experienced the story, or at least one version of it. Are they gone yet? I don't know, I can't save them from themselves. <laughs> so, if you, got, if you watched last time, our survivors were Sam and Matt, and Emily, and everyone else died in a, ver in a variety of ways. And so this is going to be my Season 2 playthrough. The primary goal is not, to make, it's not necessarily to make everyone live, or to make everyone die, or even to necessarily get the exact opposite number of people to live or die. I actually don't necessarily know how it'll play out until I do it, but the first thing, the primary thing is to tr try to show how much we can make stuff change from last time. So I'm going to be picking different dialogue options, I'm going to be picking different decisions throughout the game and stuff like that. Uh, we might end up with the opposite people alive and dead as last time or some combination in between. Uh, but the, basically the primary goal is just to sh see how many scenes we can get to happen and how many dialogue options we can get to happen that did not happen last time. because. I think a number of us are curious just how much we can make this thing change. So without further ado, let's just get started. By the way, this should be a this should be a shorter playthrough than the last one. So if you're looking at the last one, you're like, oh, that took that long. Do I want to do that again? This one should be shorter because I'm not going to be sitting here speculating about what's going to happen in the future of the story because we all know now. And I'm not going to be reading collectibles that are already there. If you look at collectibles, they're all shown. They all show up as being collected already. I don't know if they're going to wipe the moment I pick new game or not, but anyway, these all build up to the culmination of like complete stories, so I already know where they go, so we don't really need them. So I'll, I'll look at that menu if we find something brand new, but for the most part, we'll be staying out of the menu, aside from maybe glancing at how I affect people's uh, status meters, and mostly just taking the straight path through the various environments instead of spending so much time looking at things that are super optional and don't affect who lives and who dies and can only spawn the same scene over and over again. Anyway, I said without much further ado, we'll start. This time I mean it! It will overwrite your current progress. Oh, you will also lose any collectibles and any changes related to character status. Oh, that's disappointing. I'm okay with all of the butterfly stuff wiping out and all the character stats wiping out. It seems dumb to wipe my collectibles though, because then I could tell which ones are new and which ones aren't new. Oh well. I'll just try to remember with my brain. The butterfly effect. A tiny butterfly flapping its wings today may lead to a devastating hurricane weeks from now. The smallest decision can dramatically change the future. Your actions will shape how the story unfolds. We're about to test just how true that is, game. Is it illusion, or is it really that crazy? Your story is one of many possibilities. Choose your actions carefully. The funny thing about that diagram is it only shows like three branches, <laughs> which actually would be a pretty bad choose-your-own-adventure story. I suspect the real deal has at least more than that. Did they? Shh, shh, shh. Did you 
you guys think this is a little bit wrong? Come on, she deserves it. It is not her fault that she has a huge crush on Mike. Hannah's been making the moves on him. I'm just looking out for my girl, Em. Just because he's class prez doesn't mean he belongs to everyone. Mike is my man. Hey, Em, I'm not anybody's man. <laughs> Whatever you say, darling. Wow, things to piece together in retrospect. So Jess was here originally, and he's like, I'm looking out for my girl M, and now now he's in a relationship Anna! with her. <laughs> She's here. Shh, shh. Mike. I actually forgot Jess was in the prologue. She seemed like the slutty girlfriend that was kind of dragged into this. Mike? It's Hannah. Hey, Hannah. So we're back here again, and here's the here's the murderer dude, the guy we thought was a murderer. But he's out with their flame pack. Hey, did you see that? Dad said it'd just be us this weekend. He's probably actually guarding us. Josh. He's probably like the Wendigos are out in the forest. We must save these stupid children that came here for some reason. Can I touch that thing? What's that? That's the same note we already had seen before, so I won't dwell on it because we already know what it is. Put it down. Oh my god. What did our naive sister get herself into now? Ugh. Intervention time. So we had the option to wake up Josh. So I'm th I think I'm gonna do that this time. But he's probably out there fighting Wendigos right now, and that's why he's- uh, that's why there's weird flamethrower in the woods. I was curious about that from the get-go, because I'm like, well, why would there be flamethrower in the woods? That seems like a weird thing to do, like... Oh, I'm gonna spook you! It's like, no, if you're killing people, just kill them. Don't be like, spooky flamethrower! So, uh, the idea that he was, uh, he's actually fighting someone makes a lot more sense. Not a whole lot stashed around here. I think I have to do... No one's gonna question why the door doesn't work when you own the place? I think I have to, like, walk around a bit to trigger the event. Or maybe I just have to try the door? Got your note. Glad you can make it. Maybe we should start with a little, you know, making out and see where it goes from there. Oh, hell yeah. Oh my god. She's taking her shirt off. What? Oh my god. Matt. What are you doing here? Uh, Hannah. I'm sorry, Hannah. Hannah. Hey, this all got out of hand, Just but... a stupid prank. Uh, oh, damn. You guys are jerks. You know that? Hannah! <sighs> yep, time to make the choice. Alright, let's try waking up Josh. Well, I didn't even realize it was Mr. Robot until, like, chapter one. Josh! Josh! Well, that didn't work. Guys, there's someone outside. What the hell? Hannah! What's going on? Where's my sister going? <sighs> it's fine. She just can't take a joke. It was just a prank, Han. What did you do? We were just messing around, Beth. It wasn't serious. You jerks! Hannah! Hannah! So, should we go after her? You know, I kind of think you're the last person she wants to see right now, Mike. To be fair, oh, Mike shit. had the right call. Someone should have gone after her. Maybe she wouldn't have died. Let's fail these. Ah! We know that we know that they die, so I don't know what failing these is gonna do. Fast. Let's be mean to Beth. Ooh, Jesus, Beth. Ah, she's fine. Now that I've realized just how tutorial this part is, I don't- I'm actually not too, super worried about what's gonna happen. See, when I first played this game, I thought the whole prologue sequence- Let's see, I followed the- let's follow the footsteps this time. When I played the prologue the first time, I thought- I didn't, Well, I didn't realize it was the prologue. I thought it was just the first people that were gonna be in trouble. Oh, shit. Hi, Elk. You gonna- You getting spooked? Jesus! Fuck! Damn it, Hannah. Where are you? 
I wonder how differently we can get this to play out. What if we can get her killed by a Wendigo? That'd be a freaking surprise. Now they, they wouldn't show Wendigo that early, though. But yeah, the first time I played this, I thought this was just the first people... I thought this was just the first action yeah. segment. I thought the entire game was going to take place during this night, not a year later. So I was actually really caught off guard when we jumped forward by a year. I thought these were the people that get in danger first to establish the threat, and we were just going to go from there. But it's also a common horror trope to have the the first death at a place that to be an isolated event that people know about as a disaster, and then everyone uh, Hello? comes back Hello? later to commemorate. It's the totem! I guess I already knew about this one, though. Let's look at that real quick. Oh yeah, it does completely reset. That means, wow, that means I genuinely did miss like half the totems, even when I thought I was... I had a really good completionist... I had a really good percentage of the collectibles that weren't totems, but apparently missed a ton of the totems. There's the fire up in the hills. She's weirdly non-reactive to the flamethrower in the woods. That's clearly a flamethrower. No big deal. It's just a random weird fire. Let's not panic or anything. Hannah. Hello? Hannah. Oh my god, you must be freezing. Here, take my coat. I'm such an idiot. I'm so dumb. Interestingly, they're both actually uh, played by the same voice actor. I suppose it makes sense. They only have to do like this scene and then the, the one at the end, and that's it. Look at her in that pink jacket. You almost can't believe she's gonna crush her brother's head between her hands. false choice. It had to be. It's so important to the story that they died. Before we begin, there are a few things I need to make sure you understand. You see, no one can change what happened last year. The past is beyond our control. You have to accept this in order to move forward. But there is freedom in this revelation. Everything you do, every decision you make from now on will open doors to the future. I want you to remember this. I want you to remember this as you play your game. Every single choice will affect your fate and the fate of those around you. So, you have committed to commence with this game. This is significant. And I want to help you see it through. Sometimes, sometimes these things can be a little scary, even terrifying, but I'm here to make sure that no matter how upsetting things may get, you will always find a way to work through it. Hmm? This is completely recontextualized right. now that we know that he's Josh's we will start hallucination. With a exercise. Could you please pick up a card? And I want you to look at the picture on the other side and tell me what you feel about it. It, it is essential that you answer honestly in order to get the most out of this experience. So I, I interpret Dr. Hill as being 
Josh's real therapist, but everything we see in the game is not any of the real therapy sessions. All of these things we see in the game are hallucinations. And when he talks about the game, he's du it's doublespeak. It's, it's meta-narrative, because of course he's talking to us about the fact that we're playing a video game, but also we know now that Josh is playing a game in his, in his game of revenge. So, how did that picture make you feel? Remember, be honest. Oh, that's good. In what way did it make you happy? Sunshine. <laughs> I see. So which word would best describe how you feel about darkness? Afraid, really? That's interesting. Where I come from. Way up north in Sweden, the nights are 18 hours long. <laughs> and why do you think you're afraid of the dark? Well, it's a perfectly natural fear. Darkness, after all, is the unseen and therefore the unknown. And what could inspire fear more than the terror of uncertainty. Oh dear. We seem to be out of time for this session. We'll talk again soon. Until then, I suggest you try to stay away from dark places. Well, we're off to a good start. That conversation played out completely differently than it did before. At least once they let me start making decisions. You know, his completely hammy performance is way more forgivable once you know that he's actually secretly a vision of a psycho person that's had a break and is losing his mind.